Good evening and welcome to Stat Center, brought to you by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm your host, Robert Adut of yaymath.org. There is no question we live in a society obsessed with snapshot information. We crave averages of all sorts of phenomena, and sports is no exception. In basketball, for instance, if we were to describe the number of points a player or team scores over an entire season, it would be quite challenging to say the least. That's because we'd have to look through the point tallies from every single game. Fortunately, we have ways of using single numbers to help us keep track of and interpret this data. Snapshot numbers that are representative of all the numbers in a set. With me tonight to discuss the importance of these snapshot numbers is none other than Cleveland Cavalier power forward, four-time NBA MVP, LeBron James. LeBron, it's good to hear from you. Thanks for having me, Robert. Now, LeBron, most wouldn't know this about you, but you're something of an averages wizard. Ain't nothing average about my game, Robert. Yeah, no, not average like mediocre. Averages as in arithmetic mean. Allow me to dazzle you, Robert, with this monotone delivery of mine. Calculating point averages is how I roll. It's the most efficient way of keeping track of how players generally score over a season of basketball. Finding a seasonal point average gives us a number that all the point totals from the season are grouped around. For instance, in the most recent season, I averaged a shattering- LeBron, for our viewers at home who may be unfamiliar with averages, can you first explain how you go about calculating them? Piece of cake. Simply add up all the numbers in your set and divide by the number of data points. So for this past NBA season, we'd add up all my point totals from each game, divide by the total number of games in the season, and you arrive at my season average, 25.3 points per game. That's a lot of points. Yes, it is. Uh, now, we know you're actually not scoring exactly 25.3 points in a game. So how does that number work? 25.3 points, aside from being an impressive number, is incredibly useful because it gives us an idea of what I typically score in any given game. Okay, in other words, your mean of 25.3 points per game is the best representative snapshot of your nightly point totals for that particular season. Now you're speaking my language. This is why if you look at my seasonal point average, there's no question I should have won the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award that year. I mean, come on. When you compare my average to the MVP, Steph Curry, you can see that I outdid him by more than a whole point per game. What's up with that? I'm, I'm happy you ask uh, because we've just gotten word from our producers that uh, Stephen Curry is also on the line. Steph, hello, you're on Stat Center. Hi, Robert. LeBron, walk this back for me, okay? You may have the higher seasonal point average, but I know you know averages aren't always the best way of finding the center of data. Uh, Steph, you're of course talking about the median and the mode. What else would I be talking about, Robert? Okay. The median would be the middlemost number in a data set after putting all the numbers in increasing order. Take the total points of my NBA champion, Golden State Warriors, who gave LeBron's Cavaliers a beaten. Na -na -na -na. If we rearrange the total points per player in increasing order, we see Golden State's median is 461 points. Now, if we do the same for Cleveland, we find their season median was only 319 points. Based on these points, it's a no-brainer who the better team was. Now, hold on a uh, sec. Uh, LeBron, he makes a good point there. The median can be a more accurate way of describing the center of data especially when we're dealing with teams with players like you who score much higher than your teammates. I mean, how could the Cavs' overall scoring average be a good indicator of their team's performance when you've got LeBron skewing the number high? You score pretty high yourself, Stefan. You're right, I do. So, for both Cleveland and Golden State, the player's median score is probably more useful because it's not affected as greatly by one or two extremely high or low values. That's all well and good, Steph, but I want to shift gears here and talk a little bit about the mode. Yes, mode being the number that occurs most frequently in a data set. Mode, as in consistency. Mode, 
as in 40 points a game, baby. Let's go to our point totals for the NBA Finals, if we could. As you can see, there's a peak surrounding my 40 point performance. Why? Because I scored 40 points in two of the six games we played. Preach! Now, I'm no sports analyst. I'll leave that to the professionals. But Robert, I think you can argue that because I hit 40 points in two of the six games, my plan was more consistent than Stephens, who didn't manage to repeat a point total during the finals. Which is why mode would not be the most effective way of comparing our performances in the finals, LeBron. All I know is I averaged more points per game than you did. All I so know you can take is your Golden State NBA champion. Don't you dare talk about my mode that but way. Numbers don't lie, LeBron. Uh, who averaged more points than you per night? Numbers, I don't need to listen to this clown. I could go I'm all the gentlemen, king. Gentlemen, You're the gentlemen. jester. Uh, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for calling in to Stat Center. Join us tomorrow night as we talk spread with Sir Charles Barkley. Let's talk spread with Charles Barkley. That sounded weird. Uh, in the meantime, this is Robert Adut. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, sports fans. I'm the king, you're the jester.